Hi, this is Paul. Now I'd like to show you part 7 of Cubic Wonder. In my last video, I showed that the Cubic Wonder fractal system fits perfectly into DNA and that they form diagonal and non-diagonal rungs along the dual helix. This helix is formed by running through a chain of interrelated cubes. As you can see, the diagonal rungs are a copy that keeps rising to the next cube and turning 120 degrees. I also show non-diagonal rungs. They are coming up in between. These will be 60 degrees difference between the diagonal rungs. What I've done now is I've used NURB swirls between each diagonal. This replaces the dual helix and is much nicer to look at and easier to follow, I think. Okay, let's take a look what we have. I've given each swirl an RGB color. So every three will be RGB. Each swirl is equal, except they're 120 degrees apart. I'm going to call the swirl a D. And we get six Ds here. But a string of Ds, I'm going to call a D set. They can be indicated as a capital D also and they can either be 0, 1 or 2. 0 can mean 0 degrees or 360 degrees. Okay, when I put my last video out on DNA, I had a comment from one of my viewers. His name was Mike. He mentioned that it was like three-phase electricity, missing one leg. So let's add another spiral 120 degrees apart. So as you can see, phase A, phase B and phase C rises up a cube between them. So I guess if we use an 120 degree lag in each phase, maybe it's possible to have DNA in three phases. In my last video, I wasn't satisfied with the helix on the bend. Didn't seem right somehow. Now I've seemed to have found the answer. So check this out. First we make a space for the bend by moving the D set up one cube. And then we can form a bend by rotating that D set 180 degrees around the correct axis. We have also created a space for a new swirl. This swirl is different to the last one. The last one was 120. This one's an 180 degree swirl. And I've called it a spago because it gives order to the spaghetti. Okay, let's zoom in to that axis. Notice I show a little yellow line. It's coming from the center of the empty cube and it goes to the midpoint of the edge of that cube. Now I show one end being A and the other end of that edge being B. Now A and B will flip 180 degrees using the blue circle as a path and that yellow line as a center axis. Okay, now let's check the diagonals around that spago. As you can see, the two diagonals are in parallel. That's because they're 180 degrees. So we move on a bit and now you can see that we have a non-diagonal as well on the spago. So that's spot on. Okay, before we leave this scene, I want to show you a method that I'm using to figure out the way the DNA string goes from one direction to another at different angles. I use little cubes and pipes out of the geometry that is shown. I guess the length of the pipe depends on the length of the D set. But what is most important, the angle must always be along the diagonal of the face, never on the edge. Okay, so now let's go and take a look how this thing starts moving around. We've got a bend on the red D. So we call the red D a zero. And let's give the other one some numbers. You can see that the most important number is the number before the spago, and that is a zero. Now, if we take away the zero, we have to rotate the spago down to the two. Let's do it. Now you can see that the D set after the spago has rotated around 120 degrees. And you can see that the zero starts up after the spago now. I guess the colors need changing, but they're only there for show. So now I'll take the two away. And do the same for the one. 
So now the deset has rotated to 240 degrees. And again, the numbers after the spade go need have to be changed. So now when we take the one away, we back to the zero and we back to zero degrees or 360, whatever you want. I would think the 3D script guys would make this dance to any two. And if there's a way for recording the sequence of parallel and non-parallel rungs, the DNA wanderings could be reproduced. You can see that the zero orientation comes up in the same place every third. So in this animation, I'm going to bring in the phase B and C to fill them two gaps up. So you can see by the results that all the spare space seemed to be used up by DNA. I don't think there's much room for chaos fractals and extraterrestrial fractals. So I hope everything's been clear enough to put you in the picture about the way these DNA stuff goes. So I'll finish this chapter on these basics and then I'll move on to something else. I have formed a simple spiral using the box and pipe system. Because of the different length of these sets, it can only be for a guide only. We'll start with one and then we'll make two copies. Now we have a three spiral. If you take three D's away, you can close the gap again. And as I show, it is possible to increase the gap and add in a longer string or even a spiral. So this is an amazing feature. You can increase the length of the D sets. As long as you don't alter the spagos, the shape is always kept very similar. It could probably be turned into a straight line fractal system in 3D. So we'll keep the same process until the spiral gets a little bit smaller. I'm going to show the cubes and the colors in a nice spiral position. Now I'm showing the three phases A, B and C again. I would say only a perfect system would produce three phases in a spiral like this. Now I'm going to show that three D's can be taken away and left to zero between the two spagos. So I would say that the string is down to the bare minimum. Okay, finally I'm going to take a look at these globules. I've put 36 of the basic D or Spago cubes and I've put them 7 to 1 apart. So let's call them DS cubes. This cube of 36 wasn't enough. So I used small diagonals to form apexes on each face. And I'm starting to get results. You can see by adding apexes to each face, what I've ended up with is a rhombic dodecahedron with 66 cubes. In front of you, you see a major puzzle. As I showed earlier, you can either link three cubes either in a straight line or you have to take the long diagonal of the face of the center cube. I made the mistake many times and I had to go back from the start again. It took me many days to crack this puzzle. I finally managed to string together 65 cubes. The reason that I persevered was because this system runs along diagonals and the rhombic dodecahedron is made up of diagonals. Because it's made up of two cubes, it's a perfect close packing polyhedra. So what better system can you have for packing DNA? Okay, now I show little Annie making copies of the rhombics. You can see that all the cubes are arranged in order and it's possible for the globules to link up to each other. So okay, let's start running the DNA string and start linking it along the 65 cubes. I went 7 to 1 because the cubic wonder was 7 to 1 to the DS cubes. I realized after maybe I should have gone a 4 to 1. So I've done some of that gap reducing. I brought the 7 to 1 down to about 4 to 1. And I think it looks a little bit better. I think there's probably a lot of different ways that the 65 cubes can link together as a string. I'm sure somebody is going to find out a lot of different ways. Okay, I think I'm going to have to call it a day now because I'm almost up to my 10 minutes. I realize I'm not a professional teacher, but I hope you may have learned something. So I think I've shown enough of order so you can all get back to your chaos. So this is Paul saying thank you very much for watching my video.